if you have a song in your heart and you'd like to shove a knife through your next victim, then don't touch that <laughs> mouse because it's time for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring you news and interviews from the Geekoverse, except for next month because we're going to be off, but you're going to see some stuff that record live, so uh, there's that. Uh, we do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is Mike Kafis. I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> oh. Also jo- joining me, less creepy, Jack Ballard. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be staying an appropriate distance away. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and our guest this week is Sophia Rose. Hi, guys. Sophia is an actor and musician. She co-owns Boss Media Group LLC, where she works as head of development. She is best known as a screen queen for her roles in various horror movies, but she is simultaneously making a name for herself in the opposite spectrum in the sketch comedy world. Sophia's biggest thrill in life is inspiring people to live outside of their comfort zones. Challenge accepted. Uh, Sophia, mm-hmm. welcome, welcome to the Mythwits. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so Sophia was going to be on, uh, as a matter of fact, like uh, a week ago, uh, but she had a she had a um, a movie to shoot, which is cool, which yes. is very cool. We'll talk about that. Um, she's she's with, like I said, she's with the Boss Media Group. So I think I want to start out with that. So because because there's a couple questions I want to ask about uh, short movies and stuff, and uh, I think cool. Boss Media Group is a good place to start. So tell us about Boss Media Group. So Boss Media Group is the child of uh, the moment in my life where I was an actor and I wasn't going out and I was like, oh, getting very irritable. And my boyfriend, who was a producer, was like, why are you making your own stuff? Like, we're living in a day and age where there's really no excuse for it. And I was like, because I need to focus in on acting. And so I rejected it for a little bit. But then I just was fed up last summer and decided to start doing my own stuff. And so I teamed up with my boyfriend. We started Boss Media Group. And in the last nine months, we've done five short films and a comedy series. Definitely given me liberation into the production world and given me a lot more power as an actor. I see. Okay. All right. So that uh, that would be Greg Mazzola would be your would be your partner. Okay. In, yes. in both, in both yes. cases. Um, so I had, that's, that's where my big question comes in. So, uh, I see a lot of independent, uh, creators. They do a lot of, sh- they do short films. I see a lot of short films that they do. Uh, and there's a lot mm-hmm. of awards and stuff that people make with the short films. Um, but I always have this question because, you know, they're not, they're not short films, are not released in the big theaters or, or anything like right. that. Uh, so I imagine it's hard to, cause you invest money into them cause they can't, they can't be cheap. Yeah. even though they're, they're short films. What is the right. return on doing a short film? Gratification. Okay, all right. Fair um, you don't. <laughs> okay. You don't. No, you don't. You don't get money. It's funny. I get this question all the time because it's like, well, why would anyone? For example, why would investors want to invest in my film when it's a short right. film and they're probably not going to see a return? Um, I have a twofold answer. One is um, a few of the films that we've done and that were have lined up our proof of concepts for features so is if you can give someone the full visuals of something as opposed to just a script because no one has the attention span for anything anymore um so with that one half it's like you don't make any money off but you have the potential to get funding for a feature out of it um on the other hand There are digital networks coming out that are going to be solely short films and that are buying short films because people's, like I said, people's attention spans are diminishing. And like, I'm a nanny for an 11 and 13 year old and I couldn't get them to watch something for five minutes if I bribed them, you know, they're (laughs) like a max span. And I'm just watching the younger generations. That's where society's going. So there are these platforms coming out that are going to be solely like um, subscription platforms like Netflix or Hulu, but it's short films. You know, you won't find features on there. It's going to be 10 minutes or less that a lot of these platforms are coming out with. And so I'd like to think that we're like entering the market at the right time because of that. But I've yet to make any money back, so I'll let you know when I do. <laughs> All right, hey, we feel you on that. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Mike. 
what is the you were saying like the these movies still cost like what is compared to like you know you know hundred million dollar production cost what is a short film for you guys cost um we've done full as fifteen hundred to as maximum of around fifteen thousand. So we have, like, we did um, the sketch comedy series that we did, Misconception. No one would ever believe this, but we shot the entire season in 13 hours. So that's what uh -huh. kept our costs at $1,500 because we knew tight budgets. So we were like, we have to make this happen in 13 hours. That's the most we had the crew for. So wow. we, you know, we had, we just had all these different locations we had a tight crew and we knew what we were doing so we were able to do it on a on a small budget but i would say a rate it's it's gonna cost at least a grand a day to film something quality because we use reds and we use sound guys and we you know our crew is like 25 people so yeah. it's not like a makeshift let's grab the handheld and go shoot something um, it definitely yeah it's not the Mythwits, so <laughs> <laughs> three guys with two cameras. Hey, look, you see well, the crew? You guys, you guys are different. Yeah, look at you, three people. Yeah, yeah. but um, you were, I don't know. I mean, if you're if you're wanting to kind of dominate the festival circuit, which is what we aim for with all of our films, you have to have the higher quality. You, you unfortunately, yeah, yeah, um, with no return. <laughs> right. No, it makes sense, you know, because the there's a lot of thing. there's a lot of creators out there, and there's a lot of competition. So yeah, you gotta you you gotta bring something very you know very high tech, or else uh, you know yeah. you're you're not gonna stand out. You're gonna be just like everybody else, right? Yeah. And like I said, I I mean I'll go back to it a thousand times, but people's attention is so hard to capture these days that if you watch something like even I work as a casting director and I get video auditions, and if I watch an audition that the sound is off or the quality is off in some way, it's like my sub conscious almost doesn't have time for it i'm like yeah. um so it's just it's a competitive field in that way the way that our world is going but we can get investors by the enticement of the ep credit people love that credit so if you meet someone with a lot of money and you're like i've got a good film you can be an executive producer uh <laughs> it attracts them in <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, Steve, so you know Steve Wallet, he interviewed you before, he put you in mm -hmm. contact with us. Mm -hmm. um, he has been backing films like on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, you know, all these different projects because he wants producer credits, you know, he's that's what he's trying to do, yeah. he's trying to build up yeah. uh, a, a base of producer credits, and now... Uh, he's starting a Roku channel. So going back to what you're exactly. talking about, like uh, mm -hmm. circuits and stuff. So we're going to be one of the shows on a Roku channel. And he's, you know, that's, that's going to be the model for that channel, which is neat because, you know, it's this new medium. Like you said, that's, that's, uh, people want alternatives. You know, was, I was listening to uh, a program the other day and they were talking about how hard it is for TV shows to get a decent sized audience that the numbers, a decent sized audience is different than what it used to be. Uh, it used to be yeah. you know, had have so many million and that was considered a decent sized audience. And now the audience, half of that is considered a great audience because of right. all the competition, all the shit people could be watching. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if, if you get, you know, half the people watching your show now than it used to be, it's like, oh, my God, this is awesome. Look how many people we got. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's good to be to, to, to have all this and people have their choice. I like it. I love choice. Give, yeah. me, give me choice. Yeah. We have so, I mean, if you just one night when I was like super bored, I just scrolled through Hulu, their independent networks that are like in the Hulu. If you like search independent, I don't know, whatever. There's like a hundred at least of like networks I've never even heard of. And I'm going through and they all have dozens of shows on them. And my mind is blown because it's like. Eh, the content is is endless nowadays. We're living in like a new film revolution almost because it's like it's never been before. It's crazy. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the shorts that you make to go. Let's go through the process. Let, let's let's talk cool. about how a short gets made. So, uh, say say your boyfriend decides, you know, hey, I'm gonna we're gonna produce this next one, and you and him are talking. You decide we're gonna do this. We got got a short. Let's do it. How does that mm -hmm. start? Where, where do you guys start? Does does he write that? Do you have a writer? Do you write it? Do you guys write it together? Uh, how would you start this process? So we've kind of gotten their process down to a formula now. 
Um, so I can tell you exactly how it goes. Um, we made a goal to release uh, content every two months. So with that in mind, I'm the writer. So I'll come up with the concept. My mind, we've mostly done horror because for some reason I have this prolific horror mind. And I don't know why, because I hate <laughs> I hate horror movies. I can't watch them, but I can be in them and I can think of them. It's like it's and not over exaggerating either. I have a very dark, fucked up mind, and I don't know how or why. But <laughs> I will sit down. We'll be like, okay, so, you know, we need to come out with a, another film in two months from now. I'll sit down. I'll write the script. He is, I call him my refinery because I, I just word vomit. I'm a very, like, I have so much in my head that comes out. He'll sit down and be like, okay, we're going to bring it down. You know, we're going to zone it down. He'll cut down my script by probably a third. And then, um, so once the script is locked, we then take two different roles. He is in charge of the crew. So like I said, we work with 20 to 25 different people that we call on at all times. And he lines everything up. He does the line producing, the budget. I do everything creative. So I cast, I do wardrobe, I do location scoutings, I do um, art department. Um, and then we pick a date, we lock everyone in, we lock all the locations in and show up to film on that date. And wow. usually our shoots are about one day. Um, but the last film that we just did was a two day and that was the longest that we've done. Cause like I said, we try and lock in as much as we possibly can in a day to get our bang for our buck. Okay. Wow. And I, I'm, I'm supposed, I suppose you have, you probably have a steady kind of uh, stable of people you go back to for, for acting, yeah. you know, people you're used to working with people you like. Well, for acting, for our crew, we have a steady people. For acting, um, we have had a couple projects where you'll you'll re-see some of the similar faces, but we're now um, trying to use new people every time. Not that we don't love our people, but um, just even me, like I have to bite the bullet and start removing myself from a lot of the things that I write because I do want to wear the producer hat more and it's hard when I'm acting in it and I show up to set and I have to be in makeup and I'm a control freak. So I'm like, but I can't like be on set watching the monitor right now. Bleh! So like, I, right. I'm trying to wear, like embody the producer more and not be acting in everything that I'm coming out with. It's fun. And it allows me to keep acting because you know, I'm not going out as much as I want to be, but, um, we want to we want to diversify it so that people don't watch our stuff every time and they're like, oh well, I know exactly who's going to be in this one this time, just like right. the last twelve. Right. Okay, so. yeah. yeah, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> um, and so, so where does where where do you, where do you find the biggest cost? Like, what is the the most expensive thing about making a making a short film or making a movie in general, making anything? What where does your money the biggest amount of your money go? Um. Okay, so the camera equipment, mm -hmm. because, um, you know, we like to get the best of the best. So we need the rigs and we need the steady cams and we need and we we our DP has a red. So we kind of whatever our DP needs to make our vision come true, we provide for him. Um, and then the locations, mm -hmm. um, because most times we're not filming at or our friends places we're renting locations so we're renting houses or we're renting the you know the lot that we need or whatnot so i have found the camera equipment and the locations to be the most expensive having said that in the last film that we just did it's very top-notch vfx and we got the best guy that we could get and that is more money than i've ever seen go <laughs> towards anything <laughs> for the special effects. So that was a huge chunk of our last budget. Right. Did it pay off? Yeah. It, it's gonna, oh yeah, it looks incredible. I, I like, we can talk about it later, but I like switch, I go from me right now, like what I look like to a horrific monster because I'm soul sucking my victim and it's so cool. And I don't have, <laughs> I'm naked, but I don't have nipples, a belly button, or a vagina because I'm an extraterrestrial being, and it looks awesome. So I'm really excited <laughs> for it. You know, awesome. I, I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I like that dimension that you come from. Then because yeah. you know, it's no. all the best parts are missing. 
That's yeah, cool. they're gone. There's nothing about this dimension that that you would like. You know, I, mean, I can do without the belly button. Brutally kills people. You, you know, if there's a <laughs> yeah. dimension where there's none of that, there's a dimension where it's just nipples Everywhere. and belly buttons and vaginas. Everywhere. And so that would be the ultimate dimension, really. The, Jack, they call would that it though? heaven. Would, it, would you it. like to see them with like nipples all over no. her arms and no, stuff? That would be like, gross. no, that would yeah, exactly. Might. I think Mike might, you know. Uh, too much. Too much of a good thing. <laughs> Can you imagine a tentacle? It'd be like weird. A big, long nipples. tentacle with nothing but nipples on it instead of something. No. <laughs> oh. Oh. And then what if they all just like randomly lactated at different times? You'd just uh. be like squirting milk over it. Yeah. And, wouldn't, it be, Mike, wouldn't it be Mike, sexy? You, you going to be able to hang no. out? You, you okay? I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> so many nipples. <laughs> that'll be, hey, Mike, I'll, that'll be my next film. I'll make it just for you. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'll make a, a, a bean covered would, in nipples. That might be a porno, not a horror movie for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, she'll be, she'll be the nipple, the nipple killer. She kills people by doing something horrible to their nipples or something. Oh, I'll figure it out. That would be horrible. <laughs> your lackey, your lactating. No, anyway, <clears throat> that would be a horror movie for me. By the way, that would that would terrify me. I don't like. I don't like any of that baby function stuff. You know, you know. I was telling. Okay, so today at work, if you guys don't mind me indulge me for just a second. Today at work, we were talking, and I, you know, I came to the conclusion that uh, uterus uh, is my moist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> you don't <laughs> like the word uterus? It, no, it hurts your it it it, okay. it hurts uterus. it hurts my my man sensibilities. Everywhere. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. I I, I don't know if I figured out what my moist is. I need to figure that out. I mean, moist doesn't bother me. It bothers a lot of people. As a matter of fact, the more we say it tonight, the more people are going to get agitated. Yeah. Right. But yeah, what, but yeah, the uterus. What's that? Moist. What about a yeah. moist uterus? A moist you. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, something. See, I, that, those combined. Mm -mm. No. That's gross. Mm -mm. No. 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 Uh, anyway, let's get the train back on tra train track. Uh, <laughs> let's get this thing off the track. Right, so I was, I was looking, I was, so I was looking through your boss media group. I'm looking through some of the videos you, you have there. And I think, I think I'm in love with secret Satan. I, I like that one. That is really, I saw that and I was like, that is very clever. That is very clever. Did you think of that? I did. So the story behind Secret Satan is we were, uh, so my boyfriend and I, we like to film something for every special occasion. So it was like our three year anniversary. We shot a music video and for Christmas, we wanted to shoot something for New Year's. So, so I'm always like, cause I create the concept. So he's like, come on, Sophia, come up with something. And I'm like, ah. So we were uh, trying to figure out what we were going to shoot for Christmas. And I was like, well, let's like do something. And I was like, secret Santa, <gasps> same letters as Satan. And so <laughs> I like wrote it real quick and we shot it. That, it was fun. Cool. Very, yeah, uh, I don't know, yeah. Jack and Mike, I don't know if you caught that one, but, uh, but they basically watched, do a, I watched the music reel. I watched all the reels and I, I, you, I enjoyed them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But that one stuck out. I don't yeah. know why. I like that one the best. That one just really stuck with me. Secret it just, it was, Satan? It was such a clever idea. You're the, I <laughs> like that. Oh. You're the first one. It, that was such a, it wasn't a makeshift because we used such great equipment, but it was a very like, we did it within three days, you know, from the, from the moment I wrote it to us shooting it. Um, much with it, you know, we didn't put it in festivals or anything like that. We just shot it for fun for Christmas. So I, a moment. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was just, it was, I didn't, you know, I didn't see it coming. You know, I'm watching, I'm just like, uh -huh, okay, oh, 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 that's funny. <laughs> they're like, open your present. And she's like, duct tape. And then she passes out. I'm just like, oh, 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 oh I see where this is going. So, <laughs> you got her. See, I like horror movies. I'm, I'm, a, I'm not, I'm not the biggest horror movie fan. Like, I'm not like crazy into Freddy Krueger or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, but I do like horror. I, I do, I do like me a good horror movie. I just watched The Void recently, and that was, you know, remember, uh, 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 Brian was saying that was really good, and uh, mm -hmm. so I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, all right, I'll rent it. I was, it was nice throwback. It was very eighty ish, eighties uh, okay. ish, and 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 he, he, what did he say, Mike? Gross and wet. Was that what it was or? 
and moist. And moist. Yeah. And moist. And moist. Yeah. Okay, and moist. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. So I like me a good horror movie. Um, I'll have to check it out. So I have a this- question. So, yep. I have a question. So uh, you mentioned before that you don't really like horror movies that much, but being that you do produce and star in them, like you said, do you still um, watch them for the technical? And oh, of course, yeah. And things I, like that? So what would you still have to have like a favorite, something that on some level, you know, s- speaks to you? So which, you know, have at it. What is your favorite? Well, I'm just going to preface that it's not because it speaks to me. It's because it's the one movie I've seen in my life that I could not get out of my head and still cannot. And I saw it over 10 years ago. And I know it's cliche, but The Ring, it just fucked with me. Like, (laughs) Samara just, anytime I look in the mirror, anytime I'm alone, I just picture her freaking Gollum presence and and it fucks me up. But... The genre of scary movies that scare me the most, the ring aside, are paranormal movies. So because I feel like, I know this is so corny, but like I know I can feel when ghosts are around me. Like, you know, when like you feel someone that's right there and shit. And so I I have that happen to me all the time. So when I watch movies like that, it just exempt it, it magnifies it because I already feel it and I already have it in my head. So then when I see it and I'm reminded of it, I get, GB. I stay away from them. But I admire paranormal activity as like a business model. I that that story is incredible. I just can't watch the movies. So I see. Okay. Hey, you yeah. know my fa- my favorite movie franchise, my favorite uh, scary movie franchise is uh, is, is this one here. Hail, Hail to, to the, the king, baby. <laughs> Do you guys ever uh, watch a uh, uh, Evil Dead series? Uh, no. Bloody yeah. assholes! Bloody assholes! Yeah, I'm on. taking notes. Okay. Oh, Evil Dead. All right. So as far as I, as far as I'm concerned, classics. these are before you were born. I'm sorry, Pete. Go ahead. Yes, they are before <laughs> you were born. No, no, no. She's not. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. But the original Evil Dead, uh, I think it was released in the, fuck. I want to say 1979, maybe even. Yeah, I, think so. I think that is probably one of the scariest fucking movies I've ever seen. That thing is. Uh, it is some ridiculous horror. So you know. See the movie is a shaky cam, you know, like the camera following somebody and shaking. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the movie they invented. That that was invented in that movie. Sam Raimi invented that, and uh, it was it was one of those uh, cheap begets invention. So they didn't have any money. So he was an independent developer. I think they did that movie on ten thousand dollar budget. Of course, nineteen seventy seven. It was like a million dollars, right? He um, mm-hmm. they literally ran a, a a rope down through the woods and tied the camera to it and just shoved it. Down through the woods, and the camera just went down the thing, and that's and the effect they got off of that uh, was part of was that whole shaky cam thing that was um, that you know was kind of scary and real, and it felt like you know felt like you're really being chased, right. uh, but it was just completely honest. He didn't have any other way to do it. That was it. You know, that's it. That's how we're gonna do it. Wow. And uh, turned out to be this Little really cool thing. Know. Set a trend. Yeah, set a trend. Yeah. Jack, what is your yeah, favorite right. movie uh, horror movie franchise? Um, Sister Act. <laughs> it's, 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 oh my god you got Peter <laughs> yes that's really uh, I don't know just kind of creeps me out yeah <laughs> what, Sister Act 2 I mean yeah um, that one I can't even make it through oh, that was <laughs> <laughs> now um, I, I hate horror movies I used to work at a hospital and I saw so much horror uh, that I don't ever want to like see it for recreation so, um, I right, just man, for bringing us down. I go, yeah, I know. Well, yeah. fucking psychos watching that stuff for kicks and giggles, you know, whatever, whatever you're into. I like yeah. a good no. comedy or a good sci fi yeah. movie. But actually, what I wanted to ask you about, Sophia, was it was mentioned in your bio that you're a musician. Or mm-hmm. so, what, what type of music do you like? What do you play? What's give me the musician angle? Okay, so the musician angle, I actually music. And the pursuit of being a musician was my first entrance into the entertainment industry at all. Um, I grew up, my dad was best friends with John Denver. So I don't know if you guys. Oh, cool. So I grew up yeah. like backstage with him and oh, um, all my guitars are John's. And so it, I grew up in a musical family and I took it for granted. I didn't, I didn't know how cool it was. Um, and then I was in college and I was like, I should maybe like, 
play music since I have access to all this stuff and my dad's a prolific musician, et cetera. So I started playing in college and I realized that I was really good at writing music. Like I sang to sing, but and I wrote very quickly. And within like a year I had written almost 200 songs. Wow. And I didn't know at the time, but I was uploading my music to an app and the owner of the app contacted me like, and was like, I've, I've been in touch with all these record labels. I need like your music needs to get out there. Can we buy this music from you? Da, da, da. And I was like, <gasps> like I was in college to be a lawyer. I was, I, <laughs> it was, it took me very off guard, but long story short, I got an offer to work um, as a lyricist out here in LA. So I dropped my whole lawyer pursuit and I moved out here. And then through that, I started acting and the rest is history, but music style. I play like a soul because I'm singing and I play guitar, but my voice is kind of bluesy. You don't really expect me to sound that way, I guess. Um, and music genre uh, would be blues in that realm. Um, I like old school music. Nowadays, I mean, I get, I get that technology is changing and everything, but everything's so electronic. Yeah. And think is fake um no one even like as a lyricist it infuriates me because i'm watching these people get famous off of these songs that are like brainwashing us to be stupid <laughs> and they're like you know three I words long that. it's like yeah. drunk coco you know like it doesn't yeah. even make sense um but thus is, You're thus talking is about the, the way our world is changing you're talking about the baking soda. yeah it's the big yeah, baking soda. I got baking soda. It's like, how is this happening? I know it, it's wait so a frustrating. Wait, to me. what's the song? It's uh, oh god, what is it? Uh, it's a, a rap song with the cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, I'm in love. And he's like, has and the whole thing is like about well, it's about it's a metaphor. Uh oh, oh no, oh, I, no, I'm back. I'm back. Hold on, okay. I don't know what's going on. There we go. Okay. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. I'm back. I'm back. Can you see me? Yes. 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 Hold on. Wait a minute. Okay. I gotta, I gotta fix something over here. Give me one second. Because uh, you're in here twice, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Oh, no. There you go. All right. There good. We're go. good. We're good. We're all good. All right. So weird. It's live. Hey, that's the live show, baby. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, I was, th this, we were talking about this the other day at work too. You know, you talk about uh, in your, your talented songwriters and, and stuff and, uh, you know, I mean, I'm enamored with the, with the talent that we have today. I mean, there's that song, you know, the song it won all these awards, you know, and, and she had like eight writers to help her write it. And it was, let's see how the lyrics go. It was a work, work, work. Yeah. Work, work. work Wait, isn't it like dibba, 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 dibba? I, I couldn't even hear the words. So. Right. <laughs> but, but, you know, just like we were Alderman. talking, we were Alderman. talking about how in the movies, it, it you know, there's so much access to now there's so much now you can mm -hmm. make these movies it's feasible the same thing's true for music and i think there's an explosion yeah. right now of people who don't need a big record company to put right. out five albums you don't need to have mm -hmm. you know all this tour support you can go just go play you know and have the internet um yeah and so when i used to play in bands there was no internet so you had to flyer and do all this kind of stuff now yeah. I, it's, it's a level playing field so just like podcasts have kind of taken away from from terrestrial radio, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and these movies are taking that you're doing are taking away from the big, you know, Sony and 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 big budget, um, you know, movie, you know, warehouse places. This is that same kind of niche is happening in music. So I think mm -hmm. it's great. And there's mm -hmm. always going to be stupid fucking movies. There's always going to be stupid fucking music. There's always yeah. going to be stupid fucking people to watch them and buy them too. Mm -hmm. So if now we can just ignore it so much easier. So, yeah. I, I, so let them have their and dumb shit. You really can like as a, as a creator in any field now because of social media, like I tell, I have a lot of friends that will like message me and stuff and they're like, I want to do what you're doing. Da, da, da. Can you set this up? Can you? And I'm like, no, it's not my job to do this for you. You do it. Like you have the tools, go get Premiere Pro, go get Pro Tools, go learn. And then you can do it yourself. Yeah. Um, so, you know, anyone can do anything if they put the time into it. Right. And if, and if you rely on other people to do that stuff for you, you're always at their whim, you know, you have to, mm -hmm. oh, I need to, I'm waiting for this person to do this thing for me. It's just like, fuck that man, do it yourself. What are you, what are you waiting right. for? You, exactly. you don't learn how to do that, you know? 
Um, we, you know, we had to edit videos for this show, so I learned how to edit fucking videos. You know, I mean, we had to do animations, learn how to do animations. I uh, had to, you know, learn how to stream live stream shows. Figured, just fuck, figured that out. I mean, it was a pain. I had to ass. learn how to turn a computer on. Right. I had to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Jack doesn't even use a computer; he's a stuff. tablet. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, up. like there's YouTube and Google. You know. Yeah. You yeah. can. It's so much easier now. It's it's easier to just you can get the answers so so much more quickly. And you know the the downside to that though is that it is there is a downside to it being easier because there's mm-hmm. so much competition now. Like everything competition, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. So so yeah, you have easy access and anyone could do it, but it's an easy access and anyone can and will do it. So you know you're you're fighting for you're fighting for people to like please watch my stuff. It's like but there's ten thousand things yeah. I could be watching. Why should I watch yours? Because uh, yeah. I want you to, but it's you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> you just got to be more entertaining. I don't, know. but I, but I think that I think the days of of your superstars, um, they're still around, and they kind of think they will always be around in some way. Because if someone can make a lot of money off of generating, you know, creating these superstars like your Justin Bieber's and stuff, it'll always happen. Right. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I think there is a, a field that has opened for people who can, they can make a living being a creator. You know, not going to be a rich superstar like you know. Uh, again, like Justin Bieber or somebody, but they could do that as their job. You know, they don't, they don't right. have to, they don't have to have the, the, the life sucked out of them by being, I don't know, like a lawyer, you know, <laughs> you know, you see, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I think it's, it's probably, uh, it's probably best that you, <laughs> you got out of that. Not that you wouldn't have been a good lawyer. I'm not saying that I'm saying that it's, it looks like, that would kill really, people. right. It looks like yeah. you're really enjoying <laughs> what you're doing more so than you probably would have done that. <laughs> Well, it's it's crazy because had had you met me in college or asked me any of this, I'd be like, what the f- are you talking about? Because I was very book oriented. You know, I, I knew I was creative, but I didn't give myself the chance to explore that. And it wasn't until moving out here. I, said, I love L.A. Everyone shits on L.A. I think this is the greatest place in the world because nowhere else will you find Every single person in the room does 20,000 things. You know, pe- you, you can. You can just do it here. You can. And I would never have learned that I could write scripts and I could write music and I could produce a film had I not been here and had like learned it and had access to it. So I guess life works in, in mysterious ways. And all actors in L.A. know how to bus. And, and wait and waitress. So. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But that's why I feel like um, acting alone. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to get hate by saying this, but acting alone isn't enough anymore because it's so saturated. Like A-list celebrities are coming on TV shows, you know? So it's like, I'm a blonde Caucasian. I'm pretty as generic as it gets. And I will go out for blonde waitress number four and like walk into the audition room and have 35 other people who are out for the same role. And it's not that I'm not talented. It's just, there's so many people doing it. So you almost have to do more than that now. Right. Right. And, yep. yeah, and, and, you know, uh, we know a lot of creatives. So we, we, we interview a lot of people who are creative, especially writers. We got a lot of writers that we've, that we've talked to over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, and writers nowadays, the whole field of writing, like all the entertainment, it seems like every bit of any kind of entertainment has changed because the internet. Internet has fucking wiped the floor with internet with with entertainment, and right. so writers now, they don't you don't become a writer and then get hired onto a studio and then you know they just pay you big bucks and you write books for them. It, it doesn't work like that. Um, mm-hmm. You know they they spend a great deal of their time marketing their own shit and like a uh, several writers we know have started podcasting you know they've podcast their books Mm. so Mm -hmm. you can actually listen to their books for free and then you become a fan of theirs and people support them and they buy their books anyway and they go to their events and then uh publishers started picking them up because they're like oh look here's a writer who has an audience if i sign them they've already got two thousand people who will just buy their book i've i i am hiring an artist who has a proven model and has fan has a fan base already um, mm-hmm. you know, our, our buddy Scott Sigler did that and he's, you know, he does both. So he does his own stuff. He has, he produces his own books, but he also is signed with a, uh, with a writing, you know, a uh, writing company. What are they called? Mike publishing <laughs> publisher, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. My brain was doing the thing. So no, so he's got a publisher. So he, he does books for the publisher. He does his own, like his own 
he has his own imprint and he releases his own books. Uh, and then he also podcasts everything. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's been, been success for him. Our, our buddy Paul Cooley is doing the same thing, following in, in, in Scott's footsteps. Uh, and, and we know a bunch of people doing that. And, you know, they market all their own shit. Uh, Scott did like what you're doing with, with your um, – with your company, he has, uh, he brought in somebody. So he's a creative and he's writing all these books, but he found that he's like, Oh man, I got to market and I got to do this and I got to do tours and I got to do all this shit that I, that normally a publishing company would do, but I have to do it all. And he's like, I don't have time to write because I'm always doing this other shit. So he brought right. somebody in and split the money with her. They formed a company together. They split everything 50, 50. And she does all the like project management and all that stuff. And he does all the writing. So he's the creative mm-hmm. and she's everything mm-hmm. else. And it's mm-hmm. been working for them. And, and I think that's what you're mm-hmm. saying. You know, that's pretty yeah. much kind of what you got to do. It sounds like, it the, yeah. Go ahead. It sounds like Sophie does with her boyfriend, too. They're, yeah. they're both creative adjacents. Yep. Yeah. We're like, we're, it's perfect. We didn't even, you know, we obviously didn't start dating aware of this fact, but he's very business and numbers and, you know, and I'm very love and fairies and, you know, and so like together we're, we, we cover all spectrums, but like I said, I am starting to move into removing myself from being involved in front of the camera so that I can get a, you know, have a much more hands-on grasp behind the camera because it's, it, I can't do both. So I want to learn to be the feisty producer that my boyfriend is. He's a shark. Oh, cool. cool. Awesome. All right, so hey, hey, let's let, let's talk a little bit. So you did uh, Beverly Kills, right? So you have the the movie Beverly Kills, yes. and it and it won. Uh, looked like it won a bunch of awards. So how um how was that? Did you did you go to any ceremonies? You did you actually go get the award, or was it just kind of emailed to you, or or how was that experience? Uh, um, <laughs> horrifying for my parents. Okay. Um. <laughs> Who is Beverly is one of the situations where it was actually, so Beverly Kills is a feature. We have the script, long story behind all of that, but we made Who is Beverly as the proof of concept. We were so sure that we were going to get the money to make it into the feature, which all is not lost, but we kind of like things took off with the short film. And that's kind of what showed us we can keep doing more short films. But anyways, um, yeah, it like, won several awards across the country and I won a lot of awards for being a screen queen and whatnot. Um, But no, I didn't get anything in person. These were all festivals that were not in LA. So it was like, there was one in like Italy. That was the only one I wanted to go to. And of course we didn't, but um, no, I didn't. We, they would just like email us the award or mail us the award and then email us the Laurel so we could like put it on our stuff. Um, But Yay, I'm sure every filmmaker goes through this, but you make your first film and you're like, this is it. This is it. Like, this is my big break. This is (laughs) fucking gold. And then you kind of realize it's just a springboard into the other dozen projects you're going to do afterwards. But it's so funny looking back on each film, we're like, this is it. It, And then it's not. We just do something better. It raises your standards. So it was a really interesting experience. But isn't that kind of have to approach each project? I mean, you have to kind of approach it with a, this is it. I'm going to fucking nail it. I'm going to mm-hmm. kill this. So that yeah. way you actually mm-hmm. make the best product you can make. And the next time you go, oh, that was sucked. I'm going to do so much better this time. Yeah. Right? No, it's crazy. You look back on things and you're like, how did we think that was like going to win an award? It's like, but I mean, and, and they did, which is great. But you always get better. If you, if you truly love what you do, then you're always going to improve as you go. Okay. All right. So, hey, we, uh, we're, we're, we're getting close on time, but uh, I want to talk about, I want to squeeze two more things in before, or no, three, sorry, three more things in before we go. Um, you got a new horror movie that you're working on uh, this summer, Play Day. Yes. So what's, what's that the, is the movie. So it's going to be out this summer. It's uh, That's the movie with the VFX. Um, okay. That was a movie where I literally, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning in one of those like, <gasps> like, awakenings and I had this movie like flooded into my head so I was like awoken to it it came out of nowhere and I like wrote it all down in like an hour and I was like this is probably garbage but I woke up the next day and it was way better than I thought and so we turned it into a movie and that's the biggest one that we've done so far that was the one that was about 15 grand our budget and because of the special effects but it's basically it's in the it's in the vein of Black Mirror 
So it's kind of futuristic and it's about an, an online game that people play to manifest their dream girl. And if they do all these steps and if they go through all these motions over a period of a month or two and everyone's in the game portal, like watching these people go through these rituals, um, it's almost satanic, but it, it's not. I, I tried to make it otherworldly and not so much demon. Mm -hmm. um, and so a story he finally his dream girl manifests and you think it's going to be this happy ever after but she soul sucks the fuck out of him so that's where the special effects come in and i turn into this horrific monster and i'm really excited because this is it this right. was it <laughs> right. this is gonna be it right. Right. yeah okay. i don't know boobyless character there's i don't Boobie know less. yeah no no nipple less Nipples. Yeah, nipples. I still have my boobs, but I just don't have nipples. Oh my god, I will say though, my prosthetic vagina, I have never gotten over it. I still have PTSD. I looked like I had a mini penis because of the way it folded. <laughs> yeah. And I had to do the scene and I was like, I have a penis. <laughs> You'll have wow. it. Be able to keep yeah, it. Yeah, we have we have the cement molds of everything. So Hey, you, you know, know, I had the same nightmare. I got a mini penis. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gained respect for men in a way I never thought I would, you know? <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, two more. Okay, so two more things. Uh, you have a YouTube channel, Pretty Weird Blonde. And uh, I, I watched two of the videos on it already. And uh, uh, the ones that, that, that I watched, the, the ones that I watched, I watched Drunk Pee. And uh, okay. bandana boobies. Very interesting. Nice. All right. All right. Um, I just launched it a couple of weeks ago. It's just going to be something. I'm going to release a new video every Tuesday and Thursday. It's to show the side of me that isn't that I'm not promoting for my career. So all my social media is like, we just shot this. I just did this. I just did this, you know, and right. it's like, cool me. This is to show that like I'm a human and I'm struggling and we all go through this shit. And like, here's some funny stories that I've to kind of bring humility to my picture because I am like people judge me how I look and I'm not that person. I'm like a freak and I'm goofy and I make mistakes 24 seven. So this is just my like outlet for, for putting my goofy. So subscribe cool. pretty weird, yeah. weird blonde. I'll make you laugh. You know, cool. hey, hey, the very quick is... the drunk P though. Can you just uh, give us a quick, the quick, uh, Oh, version? sure. Drunk P. Uh, I was a freshman in high school. It was when I first started drinking and um, I was got super wrecked the night before. And the next day I had a doctor's appointment. Like I had a full physical and they had to test my pee. They took a pee sample and I like freaked out in the bathroom because my pee was like almost red. It was so diluted with alcohol. And I was so scared that I was going to get caught for underage drinking that I poured half of it out and then and then filled the rest with the tap water to like dilute the color of it. And it ended up becoming way worse of a situation because the yeah. doctor brought in his medical staff. He was like, your, your pee, you have so much chlorine in your system. Right. This is really <laughs> bad. We don't know like what's going on. And like, I just rolled with it and started blaming my mom. I was like, what are you oh. feeding me at home? Da 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 da. So it's just situations like that. Like I get myself in these situations and then instead of being like practical, I'm just like, no. And I like throw a thousand more fake details in there and I make it a million times worse. So Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I always wanted to like, you know, they give you the pee thing and you go and you get this big thing. It's like a big thing of pee. I always wanted to like hand it back to them with like a turd in it, you know, like pee and like, <laughs> a, like a turd in it. Yeah, <laughs> just you know, like, there you go. It's Oh, speaking of turd, my topic this week for my videos is, is all about poop. So, you know, stay oh, tuned. nice. Oh, right. great. Yeah. I'm in. Steph, I'm in. He's one of the things. Steph, yes, he's attracted to the turd. That yep. I like talking about oh. that. That's something. Like that. yeah. I, so, <clears throat> so um, enough of that. Uh, so you, have, <laughs> you also have a podcast <laughs> with uh, Los Fanboys and Latin Review Media. Now, is that, that's the Latin Review, like the, the, the guys who get all the scoops on movies. Mm hmm. Oh, nice. Yep. So um, we're officially launching in two weeks. We've been recording, but we haven't launched anything yet. And basically, 
basically it's me and my friend Eric, who's a director, and then our co-host Joseph, who is Los Ben Boys himself. And we just review movies and trailers and all things film from my perspective as an actor, his perspective as a director, and then Los Fanboy. So every week we just kind of shoot the shit and talk about movies. And I'm awesome. always like the the naive one because I'm so uncultured. <laughs> but I'm getting there, you know, I'm learning, I'm learning. So God damn, that's gonna be interesting because I'll tell you, uh on the you know, over the years I've been the, the Latin the fucking Latin review. God damn, does he get scoops? He get, I mean, he he finds out shit before anybody sometimes. And when he does, he's, you know, it's no joke. He's on, he's on point. He knows yeah. what the fuck. I don't yep. know where he gets this shit. I don't know if he's got like, you know, he, he ties directors up and puts them in the basement or what. I don't know what the fuck he gets that information, but he's really good. I don't know, but I'll tell you, Joseph, when the the co-host Los Fanboys, he is like same thing. He knows they must be like an LRM secret circle or something because. He knows all this stuff that I'm like, I don't think that's even been released or talked about yet. Yeah. But yeah, I'm always like, how the fuck cool. did he get that? So that that's cool. It's fantastic. All right. Well, let me give out some links here. So so uh, make sure you, you check out uh, you check out Sophia's YouTube channel and the podcast sounds awesome and go to a boss media group. So here are the links. Uh, she has an Instagram account. It's uh, you know, Instagram.com Sophia Rose Creation. Uh, and you can check out her Facebook page at Sophia Rose Entertainment. Her Twitter feed is, our Twitter handle is LRM underscore Sophia. Uh, also check out her webpage, SophiaRose.co and Boss Media Group, LLC.com. There is a YouTube channel, but it's like a bunch of, yeah, no, the link, link is right, right there's where the link is or in the, the show notes if you're listening to the podcast. I just started the channel, so I don't have enough subscribers right. yet you to gotta, get like a beauty handle. So you got to get a hundred of them. So yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Yep. I know. Yep. Hey, subscribe to her channel, even yep. if you don't. Fuck. Even yeah, if you don't guys. watch it, yeah. just Mythwits. You Myth. Our our fans are Mythfits. <laughs> Mythfits, <laughs> go fucking subscribe. Mythfits. Yes, yes, she needs. She needs a hundred. Just get a hundred. Yeah. There we she, go. I mean, just a hundred. Just a hundred. Just a hundred. Do us a favor. Yeah. Give, give her. Yeah. Give the girl oh, a salad. <laughs> We're going to sub. It's funny. People who aren't in this industry act like what we do is so easy. And they're like, you don't have a hundred yet. And you've been out for seven days. Like what the fuck's wrong with you? I'm like, what? <laughs> it's so much harder than it seems. Yeah. It's yes. true. Oh, who, who you telling? We, we four yeah. years yeah, in. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, fantastic. Oh, well, thanks, for, thanks for joining us, but don't go anywhere. Cause Mike, Mike, me are up, buddy. All right, man. Let's play this Damn. game. Shall we play yeah. a game? All right. We are going to play Movie Bite Madness. And uh, I have it on good authority that Sophia is not the best uh, movie. I figured she made movies. I figured, yeah, let me download some movie sound bites. You know, that'll be great. She'll, like, beat the crap out of the uh, guys. But uh, it, it's okay. It's okay. We're all here to have fun. So hey we, Mike, Mike, yes. real quick. She's um, yeah. you're not pulling like movie bits from like 1975 and shit, are you? No, oh, there's, <laughs> the, the <laughs> there's, there's stuff from the arts. Okay, right. just making sure. Said, what year were you born, there, honey? What year were you born? So you don't you, have to answer that. Not, yeah, you don't. Don't, don't answer. Oh, that. You don't what have year to answer. Was that. I born 1991. 91. All right. So yeah, she's yeah. about, okay. So, um, yeah. Wow. I graduated high school. I'm going to shoot myself now. I'll be, dude, I was <laughs> legally drinking in the oh, bar. Oh, hey, can you guys like verify like life only gets more enjoyable with age, right? No, 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 it doesn't. <laughs> you're, you're in your prime. Um, it. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I can tell you this. I can tell you this. I think I've become more comfortable in my skin as I've gotten older, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that makes up for all the fucking, I wake up and go, why does that hurt? Yeah. You, know why you're more, <laughs> you know why you're more comfortable in your own skin? Why? Because there's so much more of it. 
<laughs> there is more skin. So much yes. more comfortable. Yes, yes. I have to be more comfortable because there's, there's more of it. <laughs> All right. Come so, on, guys. Now, Let's Sophia, in it. California, okay, uh, marijuana is legal. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Do you, do you enjoy the marijuana? I actually have my medical card. Um, <laughs> for, yes. for real reasons, though. I have, I literally have, what's the thing? I should know it. The thing where you can't sleep at night. Glaucoma. Insomnia. 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 But, but yeah, I, there we go. Yeah, I, I got it for that because I, I will not sleep at night. I think it's because I have all those crazy horror ideas that pop into my head. Um, yeah, no shit. I, but I also <laughs> grew up. I grew up with stone. My hip, my parents are hippies, you know, so it was never new in my household. I grew up with it. Well, don't admit to too much because Jack here, he's, you know, he's, he's a real stickler about this kind of stuff. Please, you know, right? Yeah, right, yeah, I can tell. Um, I can yeah. tell. Such you a marijuana prude. We live in the uh, People's <laughs> Republic of Maryland, so it's like, it's a little bit less than North Korea. So yeah. I, I'm thinking by the time I'm 60, it'll be, uh, it'll be legal and I can retire and smoke weed. Right. Uh, you know, oh my god. Yeah, but but I'm so envious of that. Every time I talk to someone from California, I have to be like, God damn it, why? Or, or half of the other, or, or the other half of the enlightened, uh, the enlightened uh, states in this in this union, right? Yeah, yeah, Colorado, Washington, uh, right. Washington D.C. Yeah. Hey, yeah, actually, um, actually, um, Jack is Jack might actually be in Colorado at the moment, you know, because we're online. So. Uh, just saying hey, from, yeah, from, yeah, from, 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 are, his, from right? his bedroom yeah. in Colorado, right, Jack? Yeah. yeah. I'm in Washington, D.C. too. Okay. I'm right, in yeah. all the states where it's legal. Right. So there we go. It's right. not illegal. He's in time Maryland, traveling. Right? <laughs> it's, it's well under the, the amount. I'm not driving or anything. It's, I'm legal in Maryland. Okay. Very good. good. We're good. Hey, Jack. Jack, I think you dropped something. Did you drop <laughs> something? <laughs> no. What? Hey, Mike. Let's drop play something? the game. Mike. <laughs> sure. Cool. You want to hey, play? Okay. Focus. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's play this game. Pete. Yes. You're going first. Okay. Only because I decided to screw you. I didn't realize that it was going to line up and you were going to get an obvious one. So you okay. can't get that one. You're going first. So wait a minute. So but it's Pete. Pretty, wait, give me the order. Pretty... Pete, Jack, and Sophia. Jack, Sophia. Okay. Very good. Because I keep, I keep score. I need to know this. All right. Okay. Got it. Let's roll. Uh, we should be okay. You should be able to hear this. I hope it's not too loud. Let me, um, I got my volume button right there. All right, here we go. That's crazy. You want me to hit you? <laughs> That's right. What, like in the <laughs> face? <laughs> Surprise me. Did you hear that okay? I did. I did. Uh, is that Fight Club? Uh, is that your final answer? That is my final answer. And that was it. Fight Club. S Yes, so you get a correct one. You keep track of the winners, uh, the gotcha. winning points, okay? Got it. All right. Jack, Jack. Here's yes, I'm ready. All right. This is Voltan. I read you. Where are you? <laughs> Flying blind on a rocket cycle. Flying blind on a rocket cycle? <laughs> Gee, I wish I knew what that one was. I have no idea. No, right. you, can't, you can't. You can't hear the cheese falling off of that. Yeah, it sounded like something goofy from the seventies. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, crow. How about that? Well, crow. close, but no. Uh, Pete, regale us. All right, I don't get points for this, but no, you that that my friend was one of the greatest movies ever made. That there, nineteen eighty. Flash Gordon. 1980. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was four. I was really into that. That was right. Sophia, yeah. that, was, that there is a must miss, just so you know. No. Um, all you know about Flash Gordon, you can see in, um, in uh, what was that? Uh, what's the, the bear, the movie about the bear? Um, oh, Ted. Ted, yeah. That's all you need oh, to Ted. know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. Well, this one is for you. <laughs> I'm already not gonna get it right, so let's do it. I did not. I did not do this on purpose. So this is not done because this is this movie. I think. Oh, she'd know this. This, this one. No. Okay. Here we go. What happened in the hot stuff? What happened in the hot stuff? <laughs> <laughs> what? This one, I'm gonna give you a hit. I'm gonna give you a hit. This goes back to the '80s. But come on. Uh, 
like retro movie. Okay. If you want, you can cr- call your grandfather and have and play it for him. Stuff. What's happening? I mean, I have no idea. That there, my my friend is sixteen candles. Oh, okay. I saw that. I think when I was like four, so right. I don't remember it at all. But cool. that was that, that was long candles. duck dong. That's right, long duck dong. All right. Oh, no more right. Yankee, my wanky. <laughs> no more Yankee, my wanky. The tongue I need a rest. <laughs> okay. All right. Go number four for you, Peter. Okay. Hey. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> All right. That is, I, I know what this is. I know what it is. No, you. My don't. brain is doing the. Yes, I do. It's Jim oh. Carrey and 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 what's his face? Um. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. That other guy. Dumb and, dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber. All right. Yes. Up. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> that is correct. Okay. Right. All right. Back to you, Jack. All right. Your movie. You get to know a lot butcher and meat. We're made up of the same things. Flesh and blood, tissue, organs. I love to work with pigs. <laughs> Pete, you don't know this one? I do know this one. I don't know why. I was inspired by movies I think you would know. I have no idea why. It's not I just one of my realized. favorites. Jack? Hold on, uh, hold on. I'll give you a hint. It's not um oh god, what was that movie you were just talking about? It's not Sister Act. No, it's not Sister Act. Hey, the guy <laughs> I, 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 I'll give him a real hint. The guy talking wears a top hat. And has oh, a okay. handlebar mustache. And has uh, a the big old handlebar. Man, the, the Monopoly man made a movie. Um of, Penny West. Uh, is it uh, that Gangs of New York? Yes! Yeah. Excellent. Very Lord, good. Yes. These movies are so old, Mike Kafis. What is going that on? That was not that old. That was not How that old. old. That, movie? that was in the odds. It was in the odds, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Hey, hey, again, yet again. All right, Sophia, I swear to God, again. I did not mean for you to get this one. Okay, this is not. But I mean, I just do want to say how does baby food taste? Okay, here we go. Spoon fed. Here we go. And. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. That was the wrong one. That was the wrong one. That was the wrong one. Good. I don't know that one. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Enough is enough. I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. There you go. Snakes on a plane. Thank you for giving me an easy one. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. What a classic. There you go. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, By the way, again, can, can I say something real quick? What? Gangs of New York, 2002. Okay. So I was 14 years old. I said in the odds. That it wasn't that old. I'm just saying. <laughs> the movie's old. going through puberty. The, word, okay. the year 2000. Like what? Why 2 k just <laughs> The movie is old about? enough. To flick her bean to Justin Bieber, and you <laughs> and you said it's recent. Right? I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. Uh, where, who are we on? Pete, Pete mate. We're on me. <laughs> all, right, all right. Pete, this is you. All right. Here we go. This one is for you. Bill. Oh. Why did you kiss my ear? Why are you holding my hand? Where's your other hand? Between two pillows. I know this movie. <laughs> you are talking about old. Yeah, that that's pretty old. That's pretty Mike, old. That planes, trains, and automobiles. I guess. These are pillows. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeedly, doodly. All right. Um, 1987. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for reference, just so just you know. Reference, right. Ronald Reagan was motherfucking president. <laughs> right, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah good job. Mike. Good <laughs> I have Tourette's. I'm sorry. All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, who's who is this for? Jack. Jack. All right, Jack. Here, yeah, this one's yeah. a little newer. Okay. Okay. Happy. Charlie Chaplin. Natalia. 
She is my sister. She is number four prostitute in all of Kazakhstan. Oh yeah, I love this movie. It's very good, very nice. Yes, it's a Borat. Yes, I love ah! Borat. <laughs> very love good. Borat. Yeah, Listen. very nice, Jack. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> all right. All I'm right. A flashback to Mike's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. No, no, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, this is uh, this is Sophia, and this one, Sophia, I can't change it. Um, so I just hope uh, I hope you maybe uh, this is a little historical piece. Let's just okay. do it. Famous right. movie. Hey, man. Here we Stop go. Apologizing. Shh. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> is that it? Jack, shut up. Yes, that's it. One more time. Houston, we have a problem. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Um, the oh, uh, what if I said that was Tom Hanks talking? That was Tom. Vanilla Hanks. Sky. Houston, we have a problem. No, that's Tom Cruise. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know. What is it? Uh, that there is Apollo thirteen. Oh, I've never seen it. That's a little rocket. Yes, dip. you were three years old when the movie was made, but it references an omission that was actually in 1967. So mm -hmm. thank you for playing Grandpa's Movie Attic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike. Mike. Yes? You want to feel how hard I can punch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, then. All right, well, I... <laughs> Oh, here we go. Uh, Pete, this is for yep. you. Uh, here we go. Oh, my God. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, again, that's an oldie. But hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Beforehand. Do you know what this is? Possibly, uh, Sophia. You don't have to answer it, but do you have an idea what it could be? It's a song. <laughs> she's right. <laughs> she's, she's not absolutely wrong. right. Okay. I'm not wrong. <laughs> it's a musical. No, There's... I have no idea. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> sorry. That's... Nah, that's that's the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh uh, well. Yeah. That's right. It's old as fuck too, Jack. It's Forty-two years old. I, it's older than me. It's from 1975. Yeah. Good God, it's... Mike Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the time warp again. <laughs> what, 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 we had Jack's so we had Jack's cousin on. Jack's Jack's cousin uh, is a, is a oh, studying no, climatology, no right? He starts asking her these fucking yeah. questions from like 1975 and shit about the Hulk. It's like what the <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck is wrong with you? She won't know what that was. Right? No, she didn't. No. Listen, a lot of these things are timeless, okay? Timeless to no, you. I agree with you. No, <laughs> the kids aren't doing Rocky I... Horror anymore. The kids aren't doing Rocky Horror. Sophia, no, you don't no, know. Mike. No, I agree. No. Mike, I'm on your team. I I need to be more cultured in the classics. Hey, I'm... Don't give him anything. I'm no. Mm -mm. Sophia, my teacher. <laughs> All right. Hey, Mike, are we almost done? Yes, we are. Oh, we are. Okay. So, uh... That was so you gonna, you gonna play we? my play my music? No, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. There's two more. Oh, two more. Oh, I thought you said we're done. Okay, go ahead. Okay, no, I said we're almost done. Here we go. Okay. Uh, this would be for Jack. Me, Jack. God creates dinosaurs. God destroys dinosaurs. God creates man. Man destroys God. Man creates dinosaurs. Dinosaurs eat man. Woman inherits the earth. Uh, this is Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, bro. Which is where that clip is from. What year was that? <laughs> uh, hold on, let me let me Google it. <laughs> I know I was like in middle school. Hold on. <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> 1993. Jurassic. I was two. <laughs> she was two. That is Jurassic nice. Park for her, Mike. <laughs> yeah. See, what happens Lord. is they resurrect dinosaurs, and one of them's on a podcast. All right. Ladies and <laughs> yeah. I am omitting one. Pete, you are winning, right? Yeah, yeah. 
All right, so I'm omitting this because the last okay. one is Sophia. So okay. Sophia, uh, good luck. <laughs> About it real hard. I could remember my first parish. Oh my god. <laughs> Forrest Gump. Yes. Mama said that. Yeah, I got two points. Yeah. Very Woo! good. That's now, right. 1994's yes. critically acclaimed movie, Forrest Gump. <laughs> I was old enough to watch it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Peter? Peter. All right. The, uh, the winner this time. It's me! Like, there was a big question. I'm at four points. Uh, Jack, you had three. <laughs> Sophia, I'm so sorry you had two. So but, our big it's okay. Theory, but I will Peter? tell you this. All this proved, all this really proved, was that I'm an old shit because he picked all these old fucking movies! <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Congratulations. The points, the points yeah. decreased with age. They it's exactly did. right. It's That's true. exactly right. So, you know what, Sophia? You're really the big winner here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Maybe for my handicap in making these games, the younger person needs a handicap. So the younger you are, the more points you get. Dude, just when you do the movies, do do like the ones in the last ten years. Let's just stick to those. <laughs> but they're harder to find. It's harder to find those clips. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I give Mike so much shit. All right, Mike. Thank you. Good game. Good game. Baba Booey. Is that that's the whole thing, isn't it? That's this right. You're the Baba Booey. <laughs> see, see. Did I tell you, Sophia? We we fucking beat on yeah, him. Yeah, you did. They told us. They told me before you even came in the chat. Yeah. I know. I pop, Booey. You should have heard what we told her before you came in the chat. <laughs> they were Bad. All right. All right, everybody. Well, it's time. Let's wrap this puppy up. Sophia, thanks for coming on and joining us. You are, when you you have anything to pimp later on at some point. Uh, now, you do short films, so not every short film. But <laughs> if, you have, if you have something you want to come yeah. on, look, no, seriously, if you have something you want to come on and promote, you're always welcome to come back. Uh, Thank you, guys. Once a, once a myth me. wit, always a myth wit. Uh, you were a real pleasure. Uh, I'm going to run the closer. Everybody, here we go. Uh, you have just enjoyed another awesome episode of the MythWits Podcast. Catch us live on Twitch Mondays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Jump into the chat room and answer our guest questions. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes or, uh, blah, 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 at YouTube slash MythWits. You think I read this thing a fucking hundred times to be able to do it perfect, right? Find us at MythWits.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, like I said, Twitch, SoundCloud, as the MythWits. And uh, if this is on Roku right now because we're going to be pumping shows into the Roku channel, then uh, yeah, Roku. Uh, do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. Please give us a bunch of stars and a review on iTunes. Screenshot it, post it to our Facebook page, or prove it to me somehow. I don't give a shit how you do it. Uh, I'll personally send you something. I'll send you um, uh, uh, a special effect. I'll send you a nipple from uh, from the, the, the movie. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. Mithwitz. Mithwitz is part of the TSR Podcast Network. If you like us, you're bound to like the other great shows there. Check out TSRPN Dot com. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Make sure to check out stew97.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list, please. There's a thing right on the front that says join. Uh, that's at the stew97.com, you see. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike! I'm trying to use the phone! <laughs>